the UK and Australia. Of course, there are some obvious differences between the two. You've got the weather and the sheer size difference of the countries. But we want to go through some differences that you might experience in your day-to-day -day life if you're moving from the UK to Australia. Probably one of the main reasons why people migrate to Australia is because of the job opportunities. Yeah, with lower tax and generally high paying jobs, whether you're a backpacker or not, you're usually going to end up with more money in your pocket working in Australia. We're not going to go into the specifics of tax as it can get pretty complicated and we're by no means a professional. Definitely not. But back in the UK, we were seeing it was around a third of our wages was going towards tax, whereas here in Australia, it's more around 20%. And as a backpacker, it's quite likely you're going to end up in the hospitality industry at some point. For a job in hospitality, you can expect about $25 an hour, sometimes even closer to $30 an hour. This is the equivalent of earning about £13 to £16 back in the UK for a job you might already be doing. So that's already a few pounds more an hour. Before we've even talked about tax. Plus, you're usually paid even more to work on a Saturday and Sunday. And on a public holiday, you might even get double pay. Whereas back in the UK, you kind of just get like a base rate for any day of the week you work, it doesn't make a difference. Even if you're looking to get skilled or experienced work, if you've got a degree or something like that, we've got a lot of friends who have moved over to Australia and they've told us they're getting almost double than what they were getting back in the UK. Yeah, and also we've been working in bars and I've been earning more than what I was earning during my graduate job after uni. Crazy. Crazy. Just a little side note before we move on, the cost of living in Australia can be higher than the UK, especially if you're living in Sydney or Melbourne, but we've always found that we've ended up with more money in our pockets since moving over here. Yeah, we've definitely been able to save more. The next thing we want to talk about is Australia feels like a very outdoorsy kind of country compared to the UK. Let us explain. So obviously, you know, Australia is a massive country, but 85% of Australians live within 50 kilometers of the coast. And we feel it has a big impact on people living a more outdoorsy, beachy lifestyle. Yeah. I remember the first time we wanted to get up to sunrise at Bondi Beach, we thought we were doing this big, like crazy experience. And then we got there, honestly, there's about 100 people, hundreds of people, all on the beach. They were out for walks, doing yoga, having coffee with friends, surfing, and everyone's just out and about. Yeah, we thought we were going to be the only ones there, but no. That's just how people live their lives here. It's just... Nice. Obviously, the weather is a lot better in Australia than the UK, but people are more inclined to go out camping and do all these kind of like outdoor activities. And if you really wanted to, even when the seasons change and it gets to winter, you could just move to a different state around Australia and you could chase the sun the whole year round. A dream. Also, there are some exceptions in the UK, like people that live maybe in the Lake District yeah. or Cornwall, they're definitely more outdoorsy than like a town that we're from. Also, we noticed that in Australia, they've always got these like free outdoor electric barbecues in parks and beaches and that just obviously promotes like people to come outside and meet with friends and family and just have a good time. Next we're going to talk about the healthcare systems. Now don't get me wrong I think both healthcare systems are amazing. We've got the NHS in the UK and Medicare in Australia. And I'm sure some Australians would say that the healthcare system here isn't perfect but we're just talking from our experiences and we feel that the healthcare system in Australia is a bit better than the UK. Yeah, definitely. Just from our experience, as we said, we would have to wait three weeks plus to get a GP appointment back home, which, you know, is nothing against the doctors. They're amazing, but there's just not enough staff. Whereas here, we've managed to get a doctor's appointment the same day, or if not, the next yeah. day. It's been amazing. And we also had friends talk to us about hospital appointments or needing to go to A&E, and they've always been seen like really quickly, really efficiently. Yeah. Very, very good. But the only thing is, in the UK, all ambulances are free, whatever you need. Whereas here, no, 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 they're not free. Luckily, we haven't had to experience it, but if you do have to call an ambulance, it can cost around $1,000. Which is crazy. Yeah, a lot of people take out ambulance insurance to cover them for that, but... If you don't know about that, then mm. money. Hey, real quick, are you thinking of moving to Australia or you just like to see some more Australia content? Then why don't you go down under this video and click subscribe. Wow. Next, we're going to talk about travel and both domestic and international travel are very different between the two countries. Yeah, when we're talking about the UK, I'd say it's very well connected, both internationally and domestically. You can pretty much get a train anywhere around the country, but they are so expensive. Yeah, like a train from London to Manchester, which is pretty much across England. 
it's going to cost you like £50 or something like that. Whereas if we got a train from Sydney two hours outside of the city and it cost us $5. That's actually like less than £3. So we just thought, why are trains so expensive in the UK? Yeah, it's not fair. But when it comes to public transport, the UK definitely wins. The London Underground, in my opinion, is the best. You can pretty much get anywhere around London. Guarantee there'll be a tube station or a bus station that will get you there. When it comes to international travel, the UK is pretty well situated for this. You can get a plane anywhere in Europe for quite cheap and it's only going to take you sometimes less than an hour. Whereas Australia, you're obviously so far connected from everywhere else. You can't exactly just go on a little weekend trip somewhere, can you? It's going to cost you a lot and it's going to take you quite a while to get there. Next, we're going to talk about the price of fruit and vegetables. Yeah, the first time we went to our grocery shop in Australia, we could not believe the prices. Some of the things like mushrooms, broccolis, peppers, or capsicums as they call them here. Everything seemed like at least 50% more expensive than the UK. Yeah, it was crazy. We couldn't believe it and we didn't know why. But now it makes sense because pretty much all the fruit and veg that is sold in Australia is grown in Australia. So obviously they have to pay a fair wage and all that stuff. Whereas in the UK, apparently 80% of fruit and over half of vegetables are imported to the UK. Which isn't great, it's not good for the environment, but I think that's why it's so much cheaper because they must import them from cheap countries. Yeah, and if something goes out of season, then they just find it somewhere else cheaper in the world. Yeah. Whereas Australia, it's just all very seasonal. So like, for example, broccoli, if that's not in season, you could be paying two, three, even more times. Yeah, price. sometimes it's over $10 a kilogram for broccoli. Not the minute, it's in season. Go buy some broccoli. What? <laughs> That was weird. <laughs> so the only thing is, it does make it quite hard to eat both healthy and on a budget. Speaking about being healthy. Or not healthy. <laughs> or not healthy. The next thing we're going to talk about is chocolate. The chocolate here is just really not that good. For real. It's crazy. Like, the, it has a weird waxy texture when you eat yeah. it. Like, it doesn't melt in your mouth like it does with chocolate yeah, yeah. back home. But we don't know if this is, like, an urban myth or whether it's true. But apparently they add something to the chocolate so it doesn't melt as much as like the UK Yeah, chocolate. because it's hotter in Australia, obviously. Yeah. But the thing is like when you're in the supermarket, they've got a good selection of chocolates, like loads of different crazy flavors and it looks really appealing, but then you try it, it just, you know. It doesn't hit the spot. Lastly, the most important thing, the sizes of beer here. The first time we ordered a beer here, we were like, schooner? What's a schooner? Obviously in the UK, everyone just drinks pints and pretty much nothing else. Maybe a half pint. Maybe. Probably not. Schooner is, is two thirds of a pint and everyone drinks them here pretty much. When we first got here, we were like, what is that? Yeah. Like, that's a weird size. But now... We're converted. We're converted. Schooner is the perfect amount of beer, I think. Well, that's it. That's all we've got. These were just a few of the differences that we thought of between the UK and Australia. Have you moved to Australia? Can you think of any more? Then drop them in the comments below. But if not, we'll see you in the next one.